Hi guys, welcome to my channel and to my Back to Beauty No Buy Year. This year I am concentrating on using my makeup and not shopping for makeup. So today's video is all about my shopping behaviors, the hard and scary truth. So let's go ahead and get into it. So as always, I have notes down here. So if you see me looking down or you're wondering why I have my glasses on, <laughs> that is why. So today we're gonna kind of talk about three general things. Number one, my shopping behavior. Number two, my internal dialogue. <laughs> and number three, what I'm going to do or what I am doing to break the bonds of my shopping behaviors. The main idea in terms of my shopping behavior is wanting something to want. I don't know if you guys have experienced this or not, and I'd love to know in the comments below if I'm not a crazy person, but my shopping behavior looks like me wanting something to want. This is not a situation where I go to the Sephora or Ulta app knowing what I'm looking for, having seen something I was interested in on a YouTube, an ad, or trend mood. What this kind of looks like is me scrolling through all the new releases on the Ulta and Sephora apps. You can go on there, you can sort things, you know, in your search to new releases and specifically new makeup releases for me. And I will scroll and scroll through these apps and sometimes even coming back a second or third time to the same new releases looking for something to want. I don't know how to really explain the idea of wanting something to want. Like, here's the thing, when I'm scrolling through Nothing is actually calling my name. Nothing is giving me the <gasps> gasp effect of something that I'm really and truly and passionately interested in. And I think the fact that I scroll through the same new releases maybe two or three times in a week period or a couple of weeks shows that I'm not really wanting anything, but I am wanting to want something. Why? Because when I get new makeup, I have that immediate dopamine rush where it thrills me, I'm excited about it, I can't wait to use it, and that's true. Uh, Natasha Denona Lila palette, for example, I'm still very excited about that. However, what I found following that excitement was a very, very quick return to wanting to want something. That is definitely a big part of why I'm doing a no buy year. I don't really want anything. In fact, I have everything that I could want. Yes, there's time to time I see a palette that has a pop of lime green and I'm like, I need that. I don't. If I shop my stash, I pretty much have everything that I could need and want, so I don't need to want to want something. <laughs> is anybody confused yet? Um, and then the other thing is, sometimes I would even find myself scrolling through my favorites and my loves list or my wish list on either app wanting to want the things on my list and finding myself coming up short. Nothing gave me the gasp effect that I need to buy this right now. This is a list that I created of things that I'm interested in. So if I can't want to want something on my own wish list, this tells me that I don't need to buy anything. That's kind of what my shopping behavior looks like. I don't drive because of medications that I have to take and so I don't just run to Ulta or run to Sephora to look around. If I did, it would probably be very, very dangerous because there's that immediate gratification of picking something and purchasing it and taking it home right away. 
What I tend to do is to order things off of the apps of Ulta and Sephora. And so for me, um, I find it really interesting that I'm wanting to want things that are on my wish list. So let's talk a little bit about my internal dialogue. And of course, I would love if any of you felt inclined to share whether you've had similar experiences or whether you think I'm a crazy person <laughs> down in the comments below. Let's have a conversation that could be helpful to everybody. If this is in fact something that a lot of us go through, sharing that down in the comments could help someone else to realize that how they function and their shopping behavior and their internal dialogue is normal, so to speak. <laughs> Whatever normal is, it's not me. All right, so internal dialogue. This is talking myself into wanting something or even prior to my no by year buying something. In fact, it was mostly the internal dialogue within myself that caused me to buy so much makeup in 2008. So here are a couple of the arguments that I have with myself. The first one is that trying a new formula will enable me to be able to speak on or make comparisons to on my channel, on my YouTube channel. And that's definitely, I mean, I thought that even when receiving birthday gifts from my husband, I received the mini star palette as well as the Lila palette. And for me, immediately my brain said, now I can speak on the formula of Natasha Denona shadows, at least within those two palettes. And <laughs> Here is why that argument does not hold water. The purpose of my channel was never meant to be a review channel. Yes, I do reviews and yes, I love giving you guys reviews specifically in my beauty trash when I've used a product up or what have you, palettes of course. Um, but the purpose of my channel was to go on a journey in beauty, makeup, skincare, what have you, and share that journey with you guys insofar as it can be helpful to you in your life. So it doesn't make any sense for me to focus on purchases based on the fact that I could speak on that formula. Now, this is a different situation if I try a different, decide to try a different formula of foundation when I need to replace a foundation. That's, you know, a choice that I have to make within myself. Do I repurchase one of my favorites or do I try something else so that I can share that info with you guys? But that's totally different than being like, I'm going to buy the Lila palette. Sorry, it's just sitting here. I used it on my eyes today, so I'm not trying to like flash it off or anything. But that's totally different than saying, I'm going to buy this eyeshadow palette so that I can speak on the formula and review it on my channel. The next argument that I have with myself, and I do remember Hannah Louise Poston also speaking on this argument or this internal dialogue, and that is whatever the product is, skincare, makeup, fragrance, anything that you put on your person, your clothes, your glasses, your jewelry, whatever it is, the argument I find myself having with myself is that it will bring me closer to my ideal self. And I should say ideal self because after all, what exactly is an ideal self? Well, ultimately, if you're a happy, healthy individual, your ideal self is exactly who you are. If you're happy and you're healthy, there's nothing more that you can ask than that. But just for the sake of this argument, let's go ahead and identify exactly who my shallower self <laughs> sees as my ideal self. I have a little list here that I made. Um, so internally, my ideal self is flawless skin, unique makeup looks, which I do think I do, <laughs> uh, complete makeup collection, lacking nothing, skinnier than I currently am, and perfectly put together woman, mom, and YouTuber. <laughs> Fail. Neither makeup or skincare are going to bring me anywhere closer to my actual 
ideal self. So then I sat down and made a list of things that I think are actually part of my actual <laughs> ideal self, whatever that is. But it is who I aspire to be. It's what I want people to think of me when I'm gone. And here it is. I would like to be a confident, mentally and physically healthy woman who is forgiving, compassionate, and passionate in the world in which I live and leaves that world better than she found it if only for the people she has known and loved in her lifetime. And that's no word of a lie. That is exactly what I want for my lifetime if I could be nothing else, okay, without getting into politics or religion. So this argument of this eyeshadow palette or this contour stick or this lip gloss or whatever is going to bring me closer to my ideas, ideal self. Oh, it's going to make your lips look bigger. Oh, that's the perfect red lipstick for you. I really need a burgundy eyeliner, which I really did feel like I did. Um, it feels like something's missing from you and or your collection. But the reality is, is the stuff is never going to make you who you are. So just in time to get heavy, we're going to talk about the things I'm doing or going to do to break the bonds or the chains of this type of thinking about shopping. All right. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to completely empty my Ulta and Sephora wish list. This sounds very simple and like it would probably do nothing, but like I said, I not only do I like to play the fantasy shopping cart game, which I talked about in my intro, but I just like putting things on and off of my wish list, and it, they are generally things that I want to want. Like I'm just scrolling through the new releases and I'm like, oh yeah, loves list, favorites list, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to forego the use of either wish list on Ulta and Sephora or any other brand. And I'm going to be writing them down and tracking them for you this year. This was already a plan that I had for my no buy year. And that is to have a pencil and paper wish list and write down the month that I wanted it. Of course, cross it off if I receive it as a gift and also cross them off as I go when I no longer want them. And I think this is going to be really interesting to look back on. I'm planning quarterly, so like once a season, check in with my 2020 wish list, get it 2020, like 2020 vision. Um, so these are the things that I think I'm going to want to buy or at least look at or try in the year of 2020 when I'm done with my no buy year. So instead of putting things on my wish list on the apps, I'm going to write it down here and we will see how it goes. The reason I'm not allowing myself to put things on my favorites or my loves list ultimately is because it's become a ritual, a lot like the fantasy shopping game, which I'm also trying to eliminate. When I'm putting things in my cart, I'm that much closer to clicking pay now and I don't need to be doing that. Also, it is, you know, the fantasy shopping cart game. I've talked about it, like I said, in other videos and it has become a ritual. It has become, you know, an addiction, a part of the addiction. And I don't like using the word addiction when it comes to shopping because I think substance abuse is such a serious, serious problem that I don't think it's even fair to put them on the same wavelength. But so yeah, I just am not going to allow myself the ritual of putting things on my wish list on the app and taking them off because it has become ritualistic to me and I want to, you know, break all the bonds of how I shop and how I was before my no buy year. I feel like I'm not being very eloquent today. And the reason that I'm allowing myself to kind of, um, scroll and look at new releases as desired versus just staying off the apps altogether or never looking at trend mood again or what have you 
for me, I still want to stay relevant in terms of what's new in beauty, what uh, trends are not just in the type of makeup, but in how it's applied or how it's worn. But I want to do this in a way that I'm literally just observing the new releases. I'm looking, I'm not even thinking about whether I want it or not. But for example, okay, Tarte extended their shade range by 60 shades. That would be something I would want to know and that's a piece of information I could find out about on one of the apps. And being on the app generally doesn't tempt me to want to spend. I can honestly say I haven't been tempted to break my no buy since I started. There isn't one piece of makeup, even one piece of makeup that I really wanted really bad that ever made me consider breaking my no buy. I know I'm not going to break my no buy because I'm not giving it to myself as an option. I'm not seeing if I can do this, I am doing this. And I hope if you're doing a no buy or a low buy this year, you know that you have the power to decide to succeed. You are not powerless against the itch of shopping. You can choose not to scratch it. You could like rub it on the carpet or a tree or something, but don't scratch the itch. Don't buy anything. You don't have to. You're not powerless to stop it. You're in control of your life. And you know, if not, dive in. Like I am trying to dive in, dig deep and really determine why you have trouble not clicking pay now. So I hope this was helpful in some way. I plan to do a no buy type video other than my update every single month, just letting you know um, sort of the thought processes behind this no buy year. Um, and hopefully in some way help you if you're doing your own no buy year or month or week. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope all of your makeup days are absolutely beautiful makeup days. And I'll see you in my next video soon. Mm -hmm.